Managing electrolytes and insulin in TPN is an extremely complex skill that takes years to perfect. The gold standard for TPN management is an interdisciplinary team composed of dietitians, pharmacists, and sometimes physicians, but this might not be the case at all institutions. However, even if you aren't doing this alone and have specialists to rely on, it's still very important to understand the basics of this complicated therapy. As you already know, TPN supplies a daily multivitamin and minerals. In addition, TPN contains the electrolytes sodium, potassium, calcium, phosphorus, and magnesium, available as different salts. For example, sodium may be available as acetate, chloride, or phosphate. Magnesium may be available as sulfate or chloride, and the list goes on. The American Society for Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition, ASPEN, provides the following arbitrary ranges for daily electrolyte requirements in TPN. The electrolytes supplied by TPN are meant to meet the patient's baseline requirements, which vary greatly by patient. So these ranges are based on what patients commonly require. Let's go through the recommendations. Sodium, 1 to 2 MEQs per kilogram. Potassium, 1 to 2 MEQs per kilogram. Chloride, as needed to maintain acid-base balance, acetate, as needed to maintain acid-base balance, calcium, 10 to 15 MEQs, magnesium, 8 to 20 MEQs, and finally, phosphorus, 20 to 40 millimoles. When starting a patient on day one TPN, you'll need to choose a starting point for each electrolyte from these recommended ranges. Each day for a new TPN, routine labs with magnesium and phosphorus should be drawn to use as a guide for titrating electrolytes up or down. So keep in mind that your patient may end up needing more or less of any given electrolyte than the arbitrary ranges. Remember that for patients displaying signs of refeeding syndrome, electrolytes are not replenished via the TPN. Any abnormalities should be corrected via electrolyte doses outside the TPN bag. Insulin titration is another aspect of TPN management where skill comes with practice. First off, you should know that the only type of insulin included in TPN is regular insulin, not short-acting or long-acting insulin. Next, insulin should only be added to patients' TPN when they're clinically stable. This is because the insulin provided via TPN takes 24 hours to infuse and is only used to support a patient's baseline insulin requirements, not manage acute hyperglycemia. Patients with hyperglycemia in the ICU should be managed with insulin outside of the TPN bag so that quicker changes can be made. These patients may even require an insulin drip. Now where to begin with insulin? To estimate a starting dose for patients with no history of diabetes, Aspen recommends starting with 0.05 to 0.1 units of insulin per gram of dextrose. For patients with a history of diabetes and or severe hyperglycemia, you can use a range of 0.15 to 0.2 units of insulin per gram of dextrose. Another way to estimate a starting point is to figure out your patient's regular sliding scale insulin requirements from the previous 24-hour period and start by adding half to two-thirds of this amount to your day one TPN. Then you can see how much sliding scale insulin your patient requires over 24 hours in addition to the amount in the TPN bag, and add one half to two-thirds of this amount to the next TPN bag. Let's go through an example. Say that over the previous 24 hours, prior to starting TPN, which we'll call day zero, your patient has required 10 units of sliding scale insulin. For their day one TPN bag, you could add half of this sliding scale amount, so five units. On day one, they also require eight units of sliding scale insulin in addition to their TPN. So for their day two TPN, you could add an extra half of this amount, so four units, in addition to the five units it had in yesterday, meaning the TPN will have nine units total. On day two, they also require six units of sliding scale insulin. So for their day three TPN bag, you could add an extra three units, meaning the total is now 12 units. 
With each new TPN bag, you'll repeat this process so that the amount of insulin slowly increases until stable blood glucose is achieved and the patient no longer requires additional insulin outside of what is included in the TPN. An important note about insulin. While patients are on TPN, long-acting insulin shouldn't be started. If a patient is on long-acting insulin and their TPN has to be stopped for some reason, they will be at risk of becoming hypoglycemic since they won't be receiving a steady dextrose infusion anymore. Finally, how do we know when it's time to wean TPN? When your patient's GI tract is ready to be used, don't stop their TPN immediately. Just as it's important to slowly ramp TPN up to goal, it's important to wean TPN correctly as well. It's not recommended to abruptly stop a TPN infusion because doing this can cause reactive hypoglycemia. If TPN has to be stopped abruptly, replace it with D10, or 10% dextrose solution, for four hours and check a finger stick blood sugar one hour after the D10 has been stopped. Also, keep in mind that the goal with transitioning from one form of nutrition to another is to prevent overfeeding. For patients on an oral diet, once they have been advanced to solid foods, you'll reduce the macronutrients in their TPN to half goal. Keep in mind that having the macronutrients will not equate to having the volume of TPN, so you will have to recalculate their total volume. Once your patient is tolerating over 50% of their meals, you can stop the TPN after they've finished their current half goal bag. If your patient is tolerating their diet without nausea or vomiting, but has inadequate oral intake due to a poor appetite, you should transition them from TPN to tube feeds for supplemental nutrition. You should never supplement an oral diet with TPN for a patient with a fully functional GI tract. For patients transitioning from TPN to tube feeds, once their tube feeds are infusing at around half of their goal rate, it's time to reduce their TPN to half goal. Once their tube feeds are approximately at goal, you can stop the TPN after their current half goal bag finishes. Well done! Now you know all about managing parenteral nutrition. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.